Hey my little rainbows, we are back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you all how I edit my pictures that I post on Instagram and that I show in my videos occasionally. So this video is actually the second part of this big tutorial. So in the first video, I show you guys how to use my reshade preset and how I take my pictures. And I will refer to some things that I mentioned in that video in this video as well. So that video is linked in the video description below if you have not seen it yet. Just a disclaimer that in this video, I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom to edit my pictures. Those two programs are not free, but there are other programs out there like GIMP and Photopea. And those I've heard are similar to Photoshop. I haven't used them before. If you don't use Photoshop or Lightroom, then you can still watch the video to see kind of what I do to my pictures because those other programs have similar tools. There are a few things in this video that you will need Photoshop for specifically, but we will get to that later in this video. The first step in my editing process is to run the pictures I took through Waifu 2X Cafe. This is a program that I will show you how to download in just a second. If you do not use this program, you guys need to use it. It is so helpful. It just like immediately increases the image quality. So yes, if you're not using this already, definitely download this. I will show you guys how. So if you don't have that installed, you're going to click that link below in the video description. It is going to bring you to this website and you're going to click download now. So once you have downloaded that, you're going to click on that zip folder and you're going to drag the folder out either to your desktop or wherever you would like to save it. That way you can delete it from your downloads, whichever is the best place for you to access it. Cause I use this all the time when editing pictures. It's amazing. You guys will see why in just a second, but we're going to click on that folder and then we're going to this right here. So this is the only one with the image you guys can see. And it's an application, not the CUI one, the one that is just waifu 2 x cafe. So click on that. So once you're on the waifu 2 x screen, I am going to move my pictures over from my screenshots folder. So this is the same location that you set your pictures for the screenshot path where they should be located. I like to keep the pictures that I edit in a separate folder from my screenshots folder, just because the screenshots folder fills up a lot um, and I don't always edit every picture in there. So I just am going to click and drag. I made a Sims 4 screenshots folder on my desktop. So I'm clicking and dragging. Oh, that's going to move all of them. So I just want to copy. If you want to keep a backup copy in your screenshots folder, I recommend just highlighting them and copying them and then pasting them into the folder that you want your edits to be in. So then you will see that they show up there. So then on the waifu 2x screen, you're going to go to browse and then we are going to go to desktop and then Sims 4 screenshots. I'm going to highlight all of these and then click open. And then that will set the output path, which is where your um, pictures that were run through waifu 2x then they will show up in this folder in a separate folder. And you guys will see that in a second. So now for the settings, this is very important and I don't change it once I have it set the first time. Actually, that's a lie. I always have to reset um, the output depth bits. So I always have to make sure that is set to 16 and then batch size, which is how many pictures you are running through there. You can run a maximum of 20 in there, but we are running four in there. So then you wanna make sure that you have denoise and magnify checked. We are going to do denoise level three. So click on that. And then the set rate for magnification size should be 2.0. Then for model, I have mine set to photo up photo model. And then I have this box checked use TTA mode. Oh, and then make sure output extension is set to PNG. If you set it to JPEG, you can, but it's going to take a lot longer for it to be run through. Um, we'll change it to a JPEG later on um, when we run it through Photoshop and you can do that from the other applications, the free ones that I mentioned as well. So we're going to click start. So once Waifu 2X is done processing your pictures, it will take a while if you have more pictures to process, but it will say successful, and then it should show up as a separate folder. If you have a batch, if you've only processed one picture, it will show up in the same folder as just a picture, but it will say something like up photo, noise scale, level three, um, basically all your settings that you just ran through. 
Next, you're going to open your photo editing software. As I mentioned before, I use Adobe Photoshop and I also use Adobe Lightroom, which we will see later. Um, but you can use the ones that I mentioned previously, which was GIMP and Photopea. Those are free softwares. Adobe Photoshop does cost money. So you can either use GIMP or Photopea, and there's also some other ones out there as well. I'm going to show you first how I edit the clipping and the blue hair to make it black and all this other stuff with the picture first before I show you a few other things. Um, what I'll show you later is the coloring that I add to the picture in Photoshop. However, that is only going to be available for people who use Photoshop because they are PSD files that I use. They are not available for people who use other software. So I'm going to show you that after we do some editing to the picture first. I actually have all my filters and the logo that I put on top of my pictures saved into a separate Photoshop file called, I just call it photo. So that way I can just come back to this and it has all my settings saved for my pictures. So normally I would just click and drag the pictures into here. So I would open the one that has been run through, the folder that has been run through Waifu 2X and I would just drag and drop them in here and then I would expand it so it touches the edge here but I don't want these layers to distract you guys here. So for now, I'm just going to open them in a separate file and then drag and drop those in there later. What we're going to do is I'm gonna file open in Photoshop, open the image that I want to edit. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to fix the clipping, which is her hand. So we're gonna make her hand show. So in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that there was a first video that I did prior to this where I show you guys how to use my reshade preset and how I take my pictures. So in that video, I show the steps on how to get the pictures that you're going to need to fix the clipping in your picture. So I'm going to open this here and drag the picture that has the clipping on it on top of the one that shows her hand. So this was one of the angles that we got. I think I might actually like this one better. Um, just to compare, I can put the other one on top. It was a little bit further away. And then you guys can see the layers here. So if I just do the invisible so I can decide which one I prefer. Um, but I think I'm gonna use the ones that we took that were a little bit closer, which was this here. So again, make sure that the top layer is the image that has the clipping on it. And make sure the bottom layer is the one that shows her hand. So this should be similar in GIMP and Photopea because I've heard that they are very similar. I've actually never used them before, but I heard that it is very similar. I know that there are tutorials out there for GIMP and Photopea, so I would definitely recommend looking those up. They should have similar tools that you can use to do the same things that I'm showing you guys here. Okay, but again, first thing we're going to do is fix the clipping on this image. So what I'm going to do is get the eraser tool and I'm going to click here. So yes, more objects, okay. So you're gonna make sure that the opacity is at 100% and then you can do the brush tool, whatever size you want it to be. Um, I actually make sure the hardness is all the way down for this so it's a little bit softer at the edges. And then I zoom in here and I make the top layer just like slightly transparent so I can see her hand and what I'm outlining. Oh, actually, I'm sorry for this. I have to make sure the edges are actually a little bit sharper. So just ignore what I said earlier. Um, so then I have to make sure that I can lower the brush a little bit too. I know that you can right click to show the, like to change the brush options as well. Um, but because I have carpal tunnel and the less I click the better. So I actually just go up here and tap on it from there because that's easier on my hands. Um, so we're going to try to lower this and then we're going to erase the top layer that has the dress on it. So that way we can see the bottom layer with just her hand and just make sure that you're careful. You can zoom in as much as you need to, um, to try to erase that and make sure her hand looks okay on the top layer. Okay, so once you can see her arm with the outline, you guys can see here like this little line as well. So we're going to just lower the hardness of the brush and I'm going to feather it out a bit so it's not as harsh. 
So I'm just gonna do that for the places that I see the shadow and stuff because sometimes you'll get a bit more shadow in one of the images than the other. So just make sure that you blend that in okay with the eraser. Um, so then I'm going to go back to the top layer and right click on the top layer and go to blending options and bring back the opacity to 100. So now we can see her arm here. It looks like everything turned out okay. There's like a few extra lines here where it looked like I erased too much. Oh, I also, it looks like her ring was not completely being shown all the way. So let me just do that really quickly. Um, but to fix right here, because the pattern underneath is a little bit different um, because it's not being stretched out as much because I've made her baby bumps not as big. So for that one, the way I would fix it is with the clone stamp tool, but I'll show you guys that in just a second. So we're gonna zoom back out. And then now I'm going to shift and then select all the layers here. I'm going to right click and go to merge layers. So that's all we needed to do with the clipping, but we're gonna do more with the layers in just a second. So this really is not visible at all, especially zoomed out. So it doesn't bother me all that much, but if it bothers you, you can click on the clone stamp tool and then um, just make sure the brush is a little bit smaller here. And then what you have to do is click Alt and then click the pattern that you want to have to be cloned over this. I don't know a better way to say that, um, but you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I Alt and then click, and then I'm just going to bring that pattern in a little bit here. Okay, actually I have to make sure the hardness is up a little bit more so it's not like being so feathery. Like this, okay, there we go. So then I would just do this to cover that part of the pattern here. Um, I'm not going to do this too much though because it really doesn't bother me all that much. But yeah, there you go. All right, so that's how you fix clipping. You can do that easily with any other sort of clipping um, as long as you have the second image that, like say if, again, if his hand, if Adric's hand was being, was like clipping through her shoulder, then I would have just have to move Desta and then I would do the same thing that I did for her hand on his hand with the layers. All right, so next what we're going to do is fix his blue hair. So this happens with Sims with black hair swatch because EA for Maxis Match is weird and there's a blue hair glow all the time. There are some custom content hairs made by creators who actually have a black swatch or you can recolor the hair yourself. And I do that for some of my Sims. I haven't gotten to all of it. Um, there's also a mod that has a color slider. However, I do not use it. It's really, really big. It's like 18 gigabytes, the mod. Um, so I haven't tried it, but that's something you can do. But this is what I do to fix the blue hair in Photoshop. So you're going to right click on the layer, duplicate the layer, click okay. And then what I do, so you're gonna click on the top layer, make sure that's selected. We're gonna go to the quick selection tool, which is this, the little lasso thing. And then we're going to outline his hair and make sure that's selected. Make sure the plus one is selected so that's what you want to keep for the image layer. Usually it will do it automatically. This is what I have mine set to. I have spacing set to, well, zero or to one, sorry, to 1% and then hardness set to 100%. And then I just make sure that it is outlined the part that I want and then we'll get rid of the other part in a second. I also do the eyebrows because the eyebrows tend to be blue if they're black. So then we are going to, you can click Alt and then that'll change it to the, um, the minus brush. So the minus sign brush will deselect what you want. So I'm going to do that over like his skin, anything that's not his eyebrow or his hair. If it's over a little bit, that's fine because we're gonna use the eraser tool and I'll show you how we do that in a second. If you don't use reshade and you want to blur out the background, this is also the tool that you would use. You would use this, I do this on my thumbnails. You would use this tool to outline all of them to make sure they're selected on the top layer. And then you will do what I'm about to show you in a second. Um, and then you would blur out the bottom layer but so once I have everything selected that I need to for him, then I am going to, so make sure the top layer is selected. Then you're going to click on this little square with the circle in it. And so click on that and that will make it just like this top layer. So you guys will see, it just has his hair and eyebrows selected. Um, so once you do that, then you're going to go to image adjustments 
and you're going to oh okay so if it's not showing up i'm gonna go to hue and saturation but if that's not showing up just make sure you click on the whole image and not just the part that's selected so once you have that clicked go back to image adjustments and then hue and saturation should show up and then you're going to lower the saturation all the way and then we're going to click ok and then you're going to right click that top layer that has his hair and eyebrows selected go to blending options and then you're going to go to color overlay and then we're going to click on the color here i do like an a little bit of an orangey but like you want it to be brown um but also not too red so i go to like about here because i want like a tiny bit of a brown or reddish undertone you really might not see it all the time but i just prefer to do it this way um but click it so it's like a brown like a very dark brown color then click ok and then blend mode is hard light. And then I do about, um, you can judge for yourself how dark and how light you want it to be. Sometimes I have to do about 55 to like 70, depending on the hair, because some hairs are more blue and lighter than others for the black shade. Um, so you're going to like use your judgment, decide what you want to do. I'm going to actually do about 55. Five, I think I'm gonna make it just a little bit browner too. Um, let's bring this a little bit down. Okay, so click OK, click OK. So now you have his hair black, but we have to clean it up a bit. So we're going to go to the eraser here. Make sure it's on 100% for the opacity, and then the size. You can decide for what you want. I'm gonna make mine a little bit bigger. So now I have to make sure that I clean up around his eyebrow. Um, actually, okay, you guys can judge for the hardness for you want because if it's too feathery and too soft, then it might like show the blue a little bit on the bottom layer, but we're just going to clean up around his eyebrow here. Also for custom content eyebrows, you don't always have to do that, but for him, there's a little bit of a blue glow on the outside, but I can fix that with the clone stamp tool as well. Um, but then you definitely want to get around the hairline, that part you're going to have to clean up. Um, and then any other parts that you see too. Yeah, just make sure it blends well. Um, we're actually going to blend Desta's hair in a second, to, like right here. We're going to blend that in a second. Um, so yeah, any other part that's sticking out of the hair, you want to clean that up as well. All right, so once you're done with that, make sure it looks the way you want it to. Then we're going to click on that top layer, shift click on that bottom layer, and then right click and merge those layers. And next, what we're going to do is clean up his eyebrow here. So I'm gonna go back to that clone stamp tool and make it a little bit smaller. Um, and we're going to just use from like the inside and, and bring it out a little bit to get rid of that blue outline there again it, i mean i it doesn't have to be perfect i tend to be a little bit picky and um a perfectionist with some things but not all things so this right here was just bothering me a little bit Okay, there we go. I think that one's all good. So next we're gonna blend Desta's hair with the clone stamp tool as well. So I have a skin detail underneath a hairline. Um, and oh, also my Pinterest board, the link to my Pinterest board is in the description below. That has my CC on there. And then I also have like a skin details video where I show you guys like the hairline that I use and the skin overlays that I use. So I'm also linking that in the video description. So there are going to be a lot of links down there. I apologize, but hopefully it's helpful for you guys. Okay, so for the clone stamp tool, um, we're gonna blend this in with her hair, her hairline with her hair. Um, and I occasionally have to do this for some sims, but not all of them. Um, but so yeah, I'll click on the hairline and then just try to get that to blend a bit.
Okay, so that's all I'm gonna do here. I know like her hairline's just slightly redder. It's not super noticeable. If I decide to change it up a little bit more um, and try to get the color to match, I might do that in Lightroom later. But for now, I think it looks okay. Um, and also people's hairlines, if, especially if their hair is dyed, it tends to be a little bit darker anyway. So I'm going to keep it like this for now. But yeah, that's how I blend in hair with the hairline, which I just do occasionally. Um, okay, so next we're going to try to smooth out these lines that you guys see from MXAO that I was mentioning earlier. So we're going to duplicate this layer again and then we'll click OK. And then I'm going to select the bottom layer. So I'm going to click on filter, go to blur, and then go up to Gaussian blur. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, and then I'm going to do it at about, we'll say um, 5.0 should be OK. So click OK. So that's going to blur out the bottom layer. So then we're going to select the top layer zoom in and then get the eraser and we're going to smooth out all these lines i'm going to make sure hardness is all the way down um, select the size that you want to do this and then we're just going to erase the top here and you guys will see that it smooths out everything here the reason i try to make the blur underneath just a little bit lighter like about five sometimes maybe even less is because if you get too close to like a different color here then it's going to show up as that color if you blur it out too much so you just have to be careful another way to do this is also with the clone stamp tool that i showed you guys as well i might actually have to do that for her neck here because i don't i mean it makes sense for it to be blurred a little bit and like darker on the edges there because that way it's like a little bit of shading almost so i actually think this is okay but yeah if you need to use the clone stamp tool for that you definitely can as well um so then let me just make sure to smooth out all the other lines over here too so now we're going to merge those layers Okay, the next part is I add some shading to make it a little bit more defined and like outline some of their features like their eyes and their nose. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. So we're gonna go to duplicate layer again, click okay. Then the bottom layer, we're going to click on that and then go to image, oh, whoops, sorry, image, adjustments, and then brightness and contrast. I'm gonna bring that down to like 80-ish. Yeah, there you go, 80. Click on the top layer and we're going to use the eraser again so this way because like the pixels are being smoothed out and since uh not facebook instagram they ruin the quality anyway so i just like to make sure everything is as defined as possible i set it to about three for the eyes and then i just outline this so we can see like their eyes more and their nose more and their jaws more and all that so you guys will see how I do this. It's almost like adding, for the eyes, it's like adding eyeliner to them. Um, and I do that, oops, okay, so yeah, do that around here. Sometimes around their pupils as well. And then I don't have to do that to Adric because his eyes are closed. I might, well, I might do it a little bit just so it looks like a little bit sharper. You kind of have to find the medium to make sure it's not too dark and too sharp. However, just keep in mind that Instagram will blur things out anyway. So you want it to be visible, but also not too much. So for the nose, I'm bringing it down to about 38%, and then I'm gonna outline around her nose, and I'll do both of their other features as well. All right, so once I outline what I want, then I also do some shading around like their nose. So like their nose bridge is more visible um, and then a little bit like around their hairline too. Sometimes on the cheeks, um, it depends. I try not to do too much, but just to make their cheekbones more defined. Um, and then anywhere else I want to as well, like if I don't think MXAO did enough shading, um, then I might shade around the inside where the, MX, where the MXAO shading might've been. Um, and then I'll do that to Adric as well. All 
All right, so once I'm done with that, um, we're going to merge these layers here. So we're pretty much done in Photoshop with how I would do this. The f other thing is though, so when I told you guys earlier about the template, so this is cropped. And what I do is, I, I, you can wait until after you're done with the editing if you would like to. Um, sometimes when I just move like and drag the image into here, it's already cropped. But I crop it to, the ratio is six to seven. And I do it portrait style, which is like this long ways. So then I make sure that is set, click on that, and then click the check mark. And this is why it's best to crop the image this way because it will actually show up bigger on Instagram. And the bigger it is, the better because that way it will catch people's eye more. So next I'm going to show you guys how I do the coloring, which is what is only available for people with Photoshop since they are PSD files, or Photoshop files. But what we're going to do is, so I'm gonna drag this over to my template that I edit my pictures on. Um, so you guys can, oh, whoops. So I'm going to move the image to the top layer so I can drag it around like this. So I'm gonna show you guys how I download these. They work together to add the coloring. As you guys can see the difference they make, I'll show you guys. So if you bring it here, and then drag it all the way down. You guys can see the effect that it adds to it. And I can also adjust it depending on if I want the top of it to be like a little bit darker or something like that. So that's what the coloring does, the uh, Photoshop filters. So again, I use three. First one in the first link, it is called Fancy by Nameless BZ. These are all on DeviantArt. You are gonna have to make an account to download these. However, it is free. Um, and then, so that's the first link, that's number one. Number two is called Number 63 by Raven or Love. And then the third one is called West Coast by Powdered Arsenic. So you're gonna click on download. So what we're going to do is the Fancy by Nameless BZ. So that'll show up as a file. So you're just gonna click on that. It'll open in a separate tab. I export these three effects differently. The first two I export in Photoshop and turn into a PNG file and make sure that it has a transparent background. And the third one, I click and drag it from Photoshop and you guys will see why in just a second. I know that's confusing. I'm so sorry. I know I did those differently and I hadn't realized it, but the way that I have the settings right now is how I like it. So I wanna keep it this way. All right, once you have dragged over the PSD file, the folder from West Coast and then dragged on top of here the Fancy by Nameless and the number 63 by Raven or Love. Make sure you have all three of those set. Now we're gonna have our first layer, which is Fancy by Nameless. We're gonna right click that, go to blending options. Okay, now you have to make sure blend mode is on vivid light and I set mine to about 18 for the opacity. Cause when you first drop it in, it's like not gonna be transparent at all. So make sure you click okay. My second one, which is number 63 by Raven or Love. That blend mode is at hard light and the opacity is set at 14. And then click OK. Now for group one, this one should be exactly the same as it is for the image. I don't think you have to change anything, maybe the opacity a little bit, but the blend mode is set as pass through, which is only available if you click and drag it over to your image, which is why I said you had to do that one that way. And then the opacity I have is set to 17, but that's all you have to do for the coloring so then I just make sure that those layers are on top of my image and then what you can do for the top layer for fancy by nameless you can move that around I expand mine a lot so mine like the original one is probably down here or something like that so you're probably rotating it a bit too but one side of this is darker than the other side so whatever side is really light in your picture like the um, bottom layer for west coast that says group one that tends to make the top of your picture lighter so I always make the side that has the dark shade, which you can see on here. I make that at the top usually. I expand it so it blends a little bit better and it's not as harsh. And then I bring that on top of here and go to the part that I want to be just a little bit darker like this. And then yeah, you guys can see if you move it around that it'll make part of your image darker and lighter. And then I have my logo on top of the picture, which not everyone does. I just prefer to do it that way. Okay, but now we're going to export this image so we can put it into Lightroom. So export as, and then I make sure my scale, I click on 500, but then automatically mine brings it down to 499. It says that's as far as it can go. And then I make sure that the format is a JPEG. The quality is at 100%. 
um, and then it'll just take a bit to load. If it takes too long, and if it says there's like an error or something like that, you're gonna wanna right click the images and say merge all visible layers and that will help it for some reason. I guess it just makes the file like not as big. So like right now it is taking a long time. So I'm gonna exit out. I'm gonna right click and say merge visible. And then we're going to go to file, export, export as and then it should be a lot quicker now. Okay, there we go. So now once you see it here, then we're gonna go to export and we are going to save this as Adric. Oh, what's their ship name? Daedric, Daedric. There we go. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Daedric, okay, there we go. Um, now we're going, I'm just gonna save this to my desktop for now. Actually, let's save this in the Sims 4 screenshot folder. Click open, save. All right, once that is saved, Again, if you forgot to save this whole file as a template, you can click Control Z to undo the merged layers. And then you can go to File, Save As, and then save as whatever you want it to be, like Photoshop template or something like that. All right, so now I have uploaded the image into Lightroom. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this separately. This is probably an extra step that I really don't have to do. I've just been using Lightroom longer, so I know what I'm doing in it, as opposed to Photoshop. It took me a little bit longer to learn Photoshop. I upload and finish uh, some of the editing in Lightroom. There's actually more we're gonna do later. So basically in Lightroom, I make the image sharper and I use the clarity and that is going to make the file size bigger. For sharpening, I go to about 100. Um, and then on clarity, I bring that up. You can also use the structure tool on Instagram to kind of do the same thing, but I like to use a little bit of clarity here. And then I also use the structure tool on Instagram, but I'll get to that in a little bit. And then it's a little bit dark for me. So I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter by upping um, the whites um, and then the shadows as well. And what I also do is I can adjust different colors. You can do this in Photoshop too, but you can adjust different colors and I prefer it to be like a little bit more of like a purple hue. Um, so I bring that down just a little bit. You can adjust other colors for the hue or the saturation for like the greens and the blues. You can make that a little bit, like I can make the teal a little bit more green, which I kind of like the look of that as well. And then what I also like to do is make their face a little bit sharper and a little bit more clear. So I'm just going to take the brush tool. I'm gonna paint over their faces. Um, and then I'm going to use the clarity and up the clarity for their face. So their faces just look a little bit more sharp and a little bit more like prominent, I guess, because that is the main focus is their faces. So we're going to do that with the clarity. You can do it with the sharpening too. I haven't been doing that as often lately though. And then that is pretty much it. It's still like a little bit dark. So I'm gonna use the shadows to make it a little bit less dark. I prefer just like bright, colorful pictures. So also I'm gonna use the brush tool on their hair because there's a little bit too much shadow on their hair or um, sorry, it's not as much shadow on their hair. Um, so it looks a little bit washed out. So I'm going to just paint over their hair and lower the shadows on that. Um, and then you can also use the blacks to adjust that as well. Okay, and I think that's everything I need to do in Lightroom. So now what I do is to get these onto your phone, you're gonna export it. Um, and then you're going to export one photo, put it in whatever photo or um, whatever folder that you guys want to. So I'll bring it back to the Sims 4 screenshots um, and select folder and export it in there. And then you can either use Google Drive or Dropbox and upload it from your computer into Google Drive or Dropbox. And then you're gonna download the app on your phone, whichever you decide to use. And then you can download the image from there. Once you have it onto your phone, you can edit if you have an iPhone, I'm sure that they have this on Androids as well. You can edit it on there if you want to. I use the Vivid effect for that as well. Um, so I do a lot of steps, but I use the Vivid and make it like a little bit brighter and a little bit more colorful on my phone. And then I upload it onto Instagram and I use the sharpening tool because that thing is great. If you can bring that all the way up on 100%. If you think it's too much, you can bring it down a little bit, but I recommend bringing it up as high as you can go. And then I use the structure tool and that just makes it look like a little bit more 3D. So I set mine to about like eight-ish for the structure tool. And then there is something called color and you're gonna go to highlights 
and you're gonna click, there's like a purple option. Um, it's in between the blue, like it's definitely purple. It's in between blue and like a pinkish color. Um, so you're gonna click on purple and I bring that down to about 25 and then click done. So it adds just like an extra shading onto my picture that I really like. And then I upload it from there. And that is how I take and edit my pictures. I hope this was helpful. I know there's a lot of steps. I do a lot of things to my pictures, um, but I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. If it's something to do with like technology on your computer, I probably won't be able to answer it, but I can do my best. Don't forget to check the description for the links or for answers to anything you need, anything that it doesn't answer, feel free again to comment below. If this was helpful, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.